hey guys welcome back today is a swift uid so i'm going to implement a sign up screen basically going to split this uh, tutorial into three sections where first section will be about creating the layout and the second part will be completely on how to bind your view model with the layout and the final part will be i have a service layer which I'll be converting into the combined version of it. Right now, it's all about closures. Third part will totally concentrate on translating that uh, closure part into a combined part. So these are the three sections I'll be tackling. So I already have a project which was built for a Viper project using iOS. So I'm going to reuse some of the service layers which we, uh, we had created during that project in this project so i'll be using the auth and auth uh, service which we had created where i had used um, the sign up feature there so that's basically an http request using alamo file that i'll be using in this one so let's start with the first part of this where which is more of creating the layout so let's get started so this is my existing project uh, where I already have whatever I'm interested in is the service layer. So I have this HTTP service and a service layer. So I'll be mostly using this HTTP service and the auth HTTP router, which is built using Alamo Fire. Also, I'll be using this auth service, which is right now having a function sign up which is returning a couple of closures, which on success and failure returns either the token or the error response. So this is what I'll be reusing and then converting it into the combined version of uh, Alamo Fire. Not the Alamo Fire, but the HTTP version of the combined. So that's something we'll be interested in. So let's just start by creating a new project. Single view app should use a swift ui and uh, let me just call it as let's code easy dot um sign up sign up swift ui so that's my project uh, and let me just call it call it the same name sign up swift UI where do I want to create let me just create it within the let's go easy folder I don't need a get repository so that's the first layout the Swift uh, UI the new layout it's pretty interesting the way we have been coding in iOS it's totally different here it's totally using binding architecture using Swift to UI. So whoever is coming from an iOS background, which is non reactive will find this totally different in the way it is being approached. But whoever is coming from, let's say an RX Swift or the RX side of things, then they will identify it pretty much how it works. So only the layout is a little different, but then the approach as such is somewhat, somewhat related to how we have been using RX Swift. So this is my layout, uh, base layout, which is created now. Let me start using my completed project now. I'll just be grabbing some of the things which I have already done in my existing project. So I'll be just grabbing that from. So first layout, this is not how it's supposed to be. The end result, I'll just show you how I'm going to actually create it. It is this is my completed project and uh, the UI is going to look something like okay need some dependencies okay let me just keep that for the time sake this is an older one fine so it's going to look somewhat similar to this but with a green background so it, this is what we'll be building right now let's start with that uh, so I already have something like a hello world text right now which i'll be just replacing with my title let me 
just grab that uh, so le let me just start by grabbing the color assets which I'm going to use I'm calling it as color codes let me create a model section and then create something called as color codes it's nothing but it's keeping all my color schemes here it's an enum color codes so I have something called as a primary color then I have a success color and a failure color so I have already defined this in my UI layer so let me just grab that so this is my content view I'm going to re rename it into what should I call it sign up view instead of this content view I'm going to rename it into sign up view so that's the view which we are creating hope it compiles yes that's fine now so that's my sign up view and uh, let me create an extension for the color codes which we created because I don't want to include uh, the you uh, the swift ui elements in my model so just that's the reason i'm just creating that extension somewhere closer to the view where we are going to use it so I'm creating an extension here and uh, let me just have a function called color which is nothing but uh, it's just going to return some of the colors which i'm going to define i already have it so i'm just going to grab it and keep it here So this is my extension. It will have a function, and it's just returning some primary success and failure colors. That's my whole intention of creating this extension here. So whenever I say, let's say, let me just start with applying a background color to this view, which is my primary color. So right now it is white. Let's just start by adding a z stack so that's my body view So this is giving me an error right now. So it's expecting me to have at least one um, item. Primary dot, which is call color let's compiling now let's try beautiful it's giving me that primary green color which i wanted also i needed uh, to have remove this uh, safe area constraints which is already applied by default so i can just say uh, edges uh, ignore for some reason it's not giving me intelligence maybe i'll have to restart things for it to work let me just try that in recent this is some problem with xcode it's still not stable so just say all oh, now you can see the um, intelligence being working now so if I resume you'll see that uh, the color is applied throughout the whole screen so this is what I wanted now Z, Z stack is nothing but uh, there are three kinds of stack available right now in Swift UI horizontal stack vertical stack which we already had in the has a stack view we had options to 
in uh, UI kit we had the option to set it as horizontal or vertical but here in Swift UI they are providing us three kinds of stack the Z, Z stack or the Z stack where you can lay out things on top of one over the one another so that that will make sense when if you, you need to embed a, a button over an image or something and, and make it like a play button or something so that's when these Z stacks come into good use and you also have the horizontal and vertical stack if you already know stack view with the horizontal and vertical layouts then you already know how it works so those are the three stacks available so i'm just using this to set up the initial stack here let me now add a um, vertical stack because i'm gonna stack up uh, controls under this so vertical stack will accept uh, it's an it needs some view at least so let me just start by adding whatever i have so i need first thing first uh, a label which will show me that uh, grocery title so for that let me add a text whatever was label in uh, ui kit is now a uh, text here so what's the string let me just call that as uh, green goes grocery So this will be, this will get start reflecting in my vertical stack, it's already there. So this is not the color and the styling which I had intended, so I'm going to change it. I want a font, which is uh, a custom font. So for that I need to add it as a font.custom with name calling it as it's called noteworthy bold that's the font i'm going to use and i want it of size 40. So that's the font i want to use also let me just make the foreground color as uh, white maybe i can even define it in my color code scheme so you can see everything gets reflected as soon as you this is totally different from the approach we are so used to in iOS. This is like uh, something, a radical change from the approach we were used to, which is actually uh, very productive because we know what we are working on. Instantly, it reflects on our UI. We don't even need to run it and see every time. So that's a great benefit which is being offered uh, in Swift UI. So this is my layout, maybe I'll also add a bottom padding, padding so that padding on the bottom, something like a 20 points. It's just adding some padding here at the bottom so that I can lay out the other controls under it. That's only intention. So that's done now. So my title is ready for the, oh, the sign up screen. Now let me just start adding uh, something like uh, a username field, email field, password, and confirm password. Four fields are there, and uh, it it's also almost going to be identical. So whatever I'll whatever I'll do is I'll create one control, maybe create one control, and then extract that as a um, as a custom control, and then keep it separate. Then we'll lay out in that way. So I'll show you how that we can do that. So let's start with the username control with this error message. So for that, let me start by adding a text field. So it's going to ask me things. So because this is a binding architecture, it's already started asking me to have a binding string, not a regular string, a binding string. So this is something new. If you are not used to, let's say, reactive programming, then a binding architecture requires you to have the control consume something which is a bindable object instead of a regular pro property or something. So this is what the deviation from regular approach is. So I am adding that right now here. And uh, let me create a property and this is called username 
so i'm just adding that username and it is requiring a binding string let me just create something for the time being called a state property which is something new in uh, swift ui where if you have a state property you can bind it with um, uh, any kind of bindable controls like a text field and whenever that state properties value changes it gets automatically updated to that control that's that's the benefit of having a state property so let me just call that as username uh username and then state property where username with initial value set to maybe i'll also mention what is the type and set the initial value to nothing so i can also show you what happens when i set something to that so this is now an element which can be bound with my property so my text view is ready now still asking me okay so uh, you cannot directly use it like this because if you are defining a property like a username it is actually of type string but if you need the binding property out of it then you'll have to use the um, dollar sign so that's a convention being followed in swift now this is translated to the binding property of the property which we have defined as a state property so this is more like um, at the rate state is actually defining more than one properties for you internally which we are not aware of let's say something on which we can set a value and something on which we can observe changes to that value two things are being set if you are defining a state property I'm not going into the depth of what is a state property, what is a bindable object, what is a um, publisher and everything <clears throat> in this uh, in this specific tutorial because that I'm going to limit to a different um, tutorial altogether so that we can specific, specifically talk about each and everything in, in detail. So let me just define whatever is needed for this project and then start the binding concepts driven in this one and then maybe i will just close with the implementation side of things but more on the detailed explanation of it let's capture that in a different tutorial altogether so <clears throat> this is my state property right now it is bound now once i try it it should uh, have that okay it failed to why let me compile and see compilation is fine again it looks like something related to okay it's fine now so it's showing me the username as a field but it's not completely visible maybe i can add a padding to this vertical layout uh overall instead of maybe how did i what what did i manage to do 60 yeah uh, 60 makes sense so that's the padding I'm applying. This looks 40. Let's skip that. This is a text field having a username. So whatever is that placeholder what which we needed, we click kept here and whatever value we need it kept here. So whenever something changes here, let's say I modified this and I resume it. It should update with whatever I applied there. So whenever this value changes, it will automatically get updated here. Let me just keep it as empty for the time sake. And also let me keep this running so that it it will automatically update the changes whenever I do that and it will display it as an end when I do it. So this, this is my initial set of things still not updated I'm not okay it's username so that's my username and uh, let me apply a foreground let me apply some things more here um text field <clears throat> okay let me add a padding because I don't have enough room to see the whole control in a better way. Let me apply a basic padding, which is whatever is default available. So that's available now. It's applied a padding on it. And uh, let me make the background. 
so background is again a color and then I'm gonna apply something which I have defined I'm not defined it yet in my control so maybe I can grab it and use it within the color codes which I have defined we call it as uh, background then go and apply it over here case dot background the return this is my color I'll just use that in the layout now so color codes codes dot background dot color so we should update my view now with that background see it's it's very simple even whatever you have defined in your code it gets applied in your layouts it's that's the beauty of this thing so that's my color it's like a light shade of a background that's applied so now, now my text box looks pretty good but then still i can apply things like around corner radius and everything let's do that so let me apply a corner radius of five it look like our regular so you can see that corner radius whatever it it starts looking like our regular i ui kit kind of a control let's let's make alignment and all it's a big mess because it's still not optimized it's still maybe if i reduce the size it is gonna fit properly but we're still editing things so let's keep it maybe reduce the size a little okay that's good that's okay so even apply the corner radius and um, this is going to be my username so keyboard type is going to be a regular normal keyboard type so let's keep that as default keyboard keyboard type to be default one yeah let's keep that as default so that's fine so my username field is ready now and uh, so what all things we needed needed here it's a username field um, needs a title with the placeholder then some property to retain or bind the values to then i applied some padding and then applied a background color to it corner radius and then keyboard type so this is going to now it, this is going to like um, um repeat whenever we add a new control let's say for for an email this is going to the structure is going to be the layout is going to be the same and one more thing we missed adding is uh, let me club this in let me add it within a stack uh, extract no i just need to do is uh, what do i extract in vertical embed in vertical stack yeah so that's done that's as simple as that because i also need something like this where i can show the error message so i just need to add a text under it that's what i'm gonna do now text And text is going to expect uh, a, a value to be set so I'm, I'm just gonna keep it as uh, we also need something to add the error so I'm just keeping it as error right now so let me call that as username error so whenever username value gets update I mean whenever the there is a username error it's going to get updated here so i guess again it has still this id is at an early stage so there are lots of bugs around it so it's not showing anything right now because i have not added anything there let me just complete that text field where i'll keep that uh, font 
I'm not ch going to change the font, but I'm just keeping it as a light font, which is still a default uh, a system font, which I'm going to use here. Then the foreground color is going to be the default red. Or maybe I can call it as the color codes dot um, failure color dot color. Let this be the color. So if you want to see what's going on, we can just add required so that it gets updated. See, it's that's the color required and uh, maybe uh, I need to align it trailing to the vertical stack. So I can just maybe I add a frame for that frame minimum width uh, being zero maximum width so this is how you create a text view which can like take up the whole space or the text which can take up the whole space max width being infinity dot infinity so whole of the length it can take up height and all i'm not concerned about last thing which i am concerned about is the alignment alignment is going to be trailing so now it's going to align towards the right side so that's the idea here so that's done so my text view is available right now which is a bright red let me just try some other red here color cards dot color dot red how does it look yeah that looks i think the previous one was better let me just keep the other one so it's required so we have now a layout vertical stack layout which is going to show you the control there's a whole control which is like having the text field with a bound field and also showing something like an error message so this is my control so what I can do is I can extract this whole thing because if I do this, it's going to get messy. It's going to show you this is what I'm going to do finally, because I need to lay out all of the controls under one, one other under the other. So instead of that, best thing is I can just extract this whole thing. So maybe I'll just say. extracts a view so it's already extracted my control and i can just call it as auth text field or text field is here but it will give you some errors for obvious reasons because you have some properties which you have defined here but it's only available in your uh, main control which is this sign of view and these properties are here so maybe whatever i can do is I can inject those properties into this view. So for that, let's uh, create an init. Or rather, uh, let's create the properties here. Let's say at the rate. So I need to have uh, a title, a property for setting the placeholder. Let me just call that as title string then i need to have a binding property this is what that whatever we had defined as just state there so we don't need a state object here we just need a binding object because it just needs to reflect the values which are going to come from that property so we'll just keep it as a binding property called text value of type string you can just keep it as type string and uh, third one being the error where error value string so three properties which you're going to replace now this username is going to get replaced with the title most like the placeholder and this uh, dollar username is going to get replaced with this text value which is more like a binding property so again because it's a binding property we need to keep the dollar sign here 
that's the convention you need to keep the dollar sign uh, and then uh, this error has to be this error value so we just extracted uh, three properties this looks good but still it's going to give me error because wherever i have extracted it's going to ask me for some see okay so here it's it's now needing some properties being passed as parameters so you need the string so in this case it's a username we know that it's going to be a username property text value which is the binding property which you're going to pass as username dollar username and the error value username error so we managed to extract this right now everything compiles fine so this is the beauty we could extract that control without breaking much of the things if you still run the app it's gonna remain the same see it, nothing has changed so once some value gets updated here let's say title it's gonna get reflected even here see that's how it's gonna work so pretty good there so let's create um, so we, we already have this odd text field now so if you need more more uh, fields let's say email what do you need so for email i just need to grab this resume you'll see one more field username instead of that i just need to say email text value i'm gonna use another property called email and i'll say email error again required field that's it the layout now it's it'll reflect email and it's bound to this email uh, field now comes a couple of fields which are like uh, um, secured fields so for that we need to actually modify things here so even if i copy paste this one and say password it's not a secured field because for a secure field we need to use not this text field but something called as a secured field so let's add one more property is secured let's keep it as false initial value and say if it's if it's secured then i need something or else i can keep this text wheel itself and one more thing for email keyboard type is different so we might have to pass not the default but the um, email type uh, the keyboard type to be uh, what's the type for email keyboard type it's ui keyboard type so if it's of type ui keyboard type by default let's keep it as default and then we also need to replace this with that whatever we are going to pass from external um, side that's my keyboard type by default it will be default and let's say if it is a secured field which is required for a key uh, for a password field and confirm password field then we'll have to modify things here so title is going to remain the same binding again the same things which are going to change are somewhere over here it's okay only it's going to be the same just that uh, whatever you're going to change here is the type of the field which is in this case it's going to be a secured field instead of a normal field and keyboard type we are passing from outside let's format it once okay it's all that's because of this control being here that's the only reason 
so password field is also available and it's not giving me any error because I have set some defaults here so I might have to change that for at least in this case it, it is going to ask me for is secured this is true yeah and it's also going to ask for a keyboard type in this case for me it is dot password um password can be anything so i don't need to really give a keyboard type for my secured field let me verify that once just that i need to say it as a secured field only thing which is going to change here is uh, over here uh, keyboard type it's in this case it's going to be email address so auth text field is of email is going to accept only keyboard type of email otherwise these things confirm and uh, password and confirm password are going to be similar controls let's also define those properties here <coughs> so that's that's my four controls and then also let me create four properties for password password error and confirm password confirm password just replace those with uh, this email error dollar password password error confirm password confirm password error secure two secure fields and all right now bound with those state properties which you have defined so let's say i just give some values here it's gonna get reflected there test at the rate mail.com password one two three four five confirm password one two three four five just update What happened to these two fields let's check those being uh, fields which are uh, okay it's fine so it's only reflecting now so we are pretty much good with this layout right now we just need to add one more thing called a sign up button after that this layout is complete so it's this is a basic layout uh, but still we did manage to extract a view and then create all that things and how to use uh, let's say um, colors which can be custom defined and use and then get that reflected in your layout all that things we saw right now now whatever we are left is uh, to add uh, the button button part final part and then I'll discuss about how we can move all of this into a view model so that you don't need to actually have this here where the view model is coming into picture but then advanced use of view model is going to happen in the next episode where you will just it's going to blow your mind the way it's going to be used it's not a regular way of doing ios but if you already know rx then you already pretty much are understanding where is going to hit so otherwise hang in there and then see this magic happening at least let's wind this up uh, with this layout complete part so i need to add one button here and it needs a couple of things first is an action and a label so action is nothing but i'm going to define a function then bind it that's where the view model part is going to come in i can otherwise i can just let's say if i have a function somewhere here Uh, sign up print 
sign up uh, clicked this is my action simple as that and this can be the label it can be a text field I can just need to say I don't need all this I can just say a text and then say sign up that's it it should at least show me basic stuff compile fine and uh, something wrong yeah you have the sign up button which is not pretty much visible so let's start modifying it so let me add a frame it should fit in the whole of this so we already know how to do that like add a frame and keep whatever is needed i need a min width and max width min height and max height let's leave that and then alignment is anyway it's going to be center aligned so even that we don't need we just need the min width and max width so it's just that uh, we are letting this layout know that stretch it as much as possible and then use that space so min width is zero again max width dot infinity so it's gonna take that space so we you only on click of it you stop it and see it's already taken that space and then i need to change the background color maybe the foreground color first foreground color let me make it as color dot white so that's at least visible for me that's visible now and i need um, a padding basic padding apply it, a basic padding on it that's fine after apply the padding then if you apply a background let me just call that as color codes dot oh background or oh, whatever i have applied as primary is that primary no it's not primary let me make it as color dot black that's my black color so if i had applied this background and then the padding then it would have looked different so you need to be you need to know the hierarchy in which you are applying things you need to apply the padding and then the background so that it also gets applied over that padding which you have applied so these are the things you should be once you start working on swift viewer you will get to know how it works but then it needs to have this kind of um, hierarchy in which you need to follow things so it it's funny in, in a way that if you had applied a background here and padding and you you could even apply another color outside this now something like this so it customized to a great extent you can do anything not like the ui kit days where you can't it's very difficult to customize stuff so it's really pretty easy here and then let's find finally do a corner radius i need this to be like um, a rounded corner so it's pretty simple even you do that it's just need to say it as infinity becomes totally rounded corner so and let's also keep a i guess padding is fine maybe i needed a padding at the bottom more than this so can i apply a padding finally at the bottom bottom padding at the top maybe dot top 20 yeah it works so fine 20 padding at the bottom after ap having applied the initial padding i can just move on and push it again then that's 20 for me so that's done so my layout is looking pretty decent and let's see on running we should have that action clickable action whether that's happening sign up did not happen sign up
Okay, maybe I'll have to run it in simulator and see. Let's run it once. Sign up, clicked yes. So that's what action is bound now. So that's pretty much the layout side of it things are because it's pretty simple isn't it like laying out is like you can even visualize what what's going on you can even um customize in any greater extent you want and even uh, extracting control it gives you more power in creating layouts it's it, it's it looks like the future i don't think this i i think this is the right direction in which uh, i i should have taken long back but then now it's there only hiccups which uh, people new to reactive programming are going to face is this binding architecture which it's not a great great thing it's i'm not saying it's not a great thing it's it's actually a great thing but then learning curve is it's going to be a little small little harder one but then it's worth the learning so wait for it so that's pretty much what i wanted to talk about today layout let me just maybe create that view model and then show you what we can do with that as well as, it, as a beginning or maybe i'll just keep that view model part for the next episode because it's a total it's going totally going to be the view model side of things it's going to be very interesting where we are going to have everything required for client side and the server side things to be happening on the view model side pretty much pretty interesting i was i had um i put my all of my reactive programming um knowledge in that because I can, I could compare whatever is happening with uh, Swift UI and combine together, and then apply it. The RX Swift side of things here, it's, it was, it it applied here pretty well. So I can show it in the next episode. So until then, keep subscribed. This code base is available. Complete episode, complete code is available in Patreon if you want to subscribe and support me in this venture or else you can completely wait for the ep upcoming episodes and watch it otherwise uh, uh, it was fun working on this for me at least so i i guess you are going also going to enjoy this part and uh, start working on swift ui if you have any kind of queries come back to me i'm gonna have uh, in-depth uh, episodes on each of the things like state publishers um then you have different other things bind bindable object lots of things are there which we can cover in each and everything as smaller bit instead of capturing is as part of a bigger tutorial so keep watching everything and let me know if you need to know something more so that i can um respond back in the comment section otherwise stay subscribed watch for the upcoming episodes until the next episodes bye from me